All right, you guys, so today I'm gonna be working on bending the brake lines. I did have a brake tuck done before, but this time I am doing something a little different, which I will show you. And that is why I have to bend all of my lines over again. On the inside of the car, I'm using soft lines, but in the engine bay, I'm using hard lines. I prefer hard lines in the engine bay. I just feel like it gives it more of a custom, detailed look. I love to see the bends and the curves of the hard line and with soft lines it, they're just soft and they you know that is why I really like to work with the hard lines in the engine bay because it gives it a dynamic visual. But before I get started with that I have to put the pedals in the car. I also have to put the calipers on the rotors. I'm gonna leave the brake line bending for last because that is gonna be the most difficult time consuming part of this. So, let's go. Break talk. Pedals are in. Yay! Progress. So now I can put the brake booster and master cylinder in. is in that's like the first thing in the engine bay <laughs> that's okay though at least it's some progress right so while I'm doing this new brake tuck I call it new because I had a brake tuck before, but now I am getting rid of the stock proportioning valve and I'm gonna be using this Woolwood proportioning valve. I'm gonna be changing out all of the rubber uh, brake lines. So I got this steel braided kit from Goodridge. I read good reviews about them and I know Goodridge is a company that has been around for a long time. Um, I actually read that Goodridge was the first company that came out with steel braided lines for brakes. So, I mean, I would figure that over all of these years, they would be good. I had a brake tuck before, so my holes were already there. It's just that I'm changing it up a little bit. I had two lines up top here and then the two down there. Now I eliminated those two up there because with the Willwood proportioning valve, you only put the proportioning valve in the rear lines. The front lines are straight connected to the front wheels. What I'm gonna be doing is going from the master cylinder to one line there. On the inside, it's gonna be a T and off of the T, one is going to go to the right hand side one is going to go to the left hand side as far as the rear lines i'm going to have one line coming off the brake master cylinder so it's going to be brake master cylinder into the willwood proportioning valve and then down here to the rear lines so i got the calipers powder coated to match the car so no more red calipers the lady that powder coated these for me got such a good color match I was so surprised because I know it's very difficult to match powder coat to paint. I'm really excited that I found this lady. I will leave her Instagram name. All right, so I'm gonna install these right now so that we can move on with the rest of the brakes. So now I'm gonna install the bulkhead fitting. This goes through the firewall and this goes on the other side to hold it. I already had a brake tuck done, so I have my holes done already. This is the hole that goes from the wheel well inside of the car. So it is in this little pocket area here and you drill the hole there. So I'm gonna put this fitting in here. All right, so that goes there. And then on the inside of the car, back here, that's where it comes through. 
So if you've never done a brake tuck before, you probably would just have a small hole there, probably a hole like the size of this hole over here, maybe a little bit bigger would be right, I believe, in this section there. I had the brake tuck done before, so that is why mine is cut out like that. So if this is your first time doing a brake tuck, you would have to cut out this area here with a Dremel. And then we put this nut. And then you would tighten that bulkhead fitting. The easiest way to do that is you get a deep socket you put it on the inside you kind of prop the ratchet in between here and so it'll hold and then you go to the outside and tighten it out there if you only have one person if you got two people then psh, it's much easier at the moment sean is not home so i'm just gonna leave that for now and i'm gonna put the line on and i will go back and tighten them later okay so this is a fitting that goes from the Honda OEM metric brake line size. So this side is an M10 by 1.0 and it goes to a 3AN. The brake lines that are used for brake tucks are 3AN lines. This one that I have for under the wheel well is a 90 to a straight. So the straight is gonna go to this side over here and the 90 is going to go over here. So in order to connect the 3AN to the stock size of the brake line, take this fitting and you put this fitting in here. And then now we can connect our 3AN line. So I'm going to thread this behind the strut. Now this line is a 15 inch line. The brick tuck kit that I had previously, it was a 12 inch line. I sourced all of the lines and fittings myself instead of buying a kit. They didn't have 12 inch. So I got the 15 because actually my 12 inch, I feel like it's too short. Basically there was no give in it. So I chose to get the 15 inch because when you put this 15 inch line on, you have some slack in the line. Before it was going straight across like that. And now since it has a little bit of slack, it can go up and out of the way and I can put a clamp here to hold it. That's it, that's how the line goes underneath the wheel well. So I'm gonna do the same exact thing to the other side and then I will move on to the other lines. So I was kind of unsure about this because I thought I was going to need the bracket, but I think I figured out a way to route it so that I don't even need the bracket. So this mounting piece can just mount right onto the knuckle here. So the line goes like this and it goes back under here and on the line itself they have a heat shrink protecting piece here so i'm assuming that maybe they thought that that was the best way to do it so that it can't rub through the line it's like it protects it when it's touching here so i kind of think that that's what it's meant for so it's just routed there and then comes back here and then up there so i think that that will work I'm happy I played with it. <laughs> now I don't need to actually get a bracket for there. So now I'm going to put the rear lines in. When you're dealing with brake lines and you have these nuts on the brake line tubes, you should be using a brake line wrench. This makes more surface contact with the nut so that it won't slip off and round up. This wrench only contacts two sides of the nuts, whereas this one contacts one, two, three, four sides. So you have less chance of rounding up brake line nuts when you're using this type of wrench. All right, so that brake line is in there nice and good. It's all tightened up. So now I'm going to move on to the other side and do the same exact thing. All right, so I got the other rear side on and I got the other side front on. Got the caliper on. Got that bulkhead fitting in place. So now I'm going to move on to inside the car. 
all right so there you can see that's where the other side wheel well comes through this side is easier than the other side because you don't have to cut any of the metal remember i said for the other side i had to cut out that area over there with the dremel but this side is just straight drill through and that is it in the engine bay this fitting is going to go to the front of the master cylinder which is the front brakes i have this fitting here well it's actually two fittings this is just basically a t and then this bottom fitting here is a female 3an to a female 3an one side is going to go on that bulkhead fitting then it goes to this t so that it can go to two lines so these two lines are going to go to the wheel wells which in turn then go to the two front calipers so i'm going to get this fitting on here and then we'll put the lines on all right so there is the fitting and then now we can put the lines on all right so i got the lines in originally i was going to put this line straight off of this t and go over but i guess i didn't realize that the engine wire harness comes through this hole right here if this line were going straight across it would get in the way of the plug for the engine harness so i had this fitting it's basically a 90 degree female to a male fitting i actually really don't like it because it's not black so i think i might actually get a black one to put there but i had it so i put it there just to see what it would be like to run the line like that and it works because it pushes the line up and over where the engine harness plug would be so it goes up and over and over there so that's perfect this one goes up over the brake pedal assembly and then the line comes down here to go to the wheel well for the driver side caliper so that is all of the lines inside is basically done that's that's it so i'm going to move on to the outside now so this is where i'm going to be mounting the willwood proportioning valve and I have to actually make a bracket to mount it there. So this is the start of the bracket and I traced where I need to cut. And this is what the finished bracket looks like after a whole bunch of cutting and grinding. All right, so out here, there is that fitting that is going to the inside, which is for the front brake calipers. So here, I have the two rear brake lines, and this is a 90 degree 3AN fitting that goes from a female to a male into this brake line. And then I have a T here to connect this brake line and join them together into one, because this one line here is going to go to the Willwood proportioning valve. So on this side over here is the out. So that line from here is basically gonna go right there to that line. And on the other side of the proportioning valve is the in. So this, I'm gonna have to do like a 180 uh, down and around to over here to this port on the brake master cylinder. So I basically have everything lined up and now all I have to do is make the hard lines to connect all of these dots. <laughs> all right, I got my brake line tubing. I have all of my bending tools. Some of them are used in different situations. That's why I have so many of them. I have this one, which is a tight radius bender. This can get a tight bend well it it can get a tight more tight bend than one like this this will not really get too much of a tight bend it's a good and easy one to use but i actually really like this one i saw this one in harbor freight and it wasn't that expensive and it actually does a really good job then i have this one which is basically like a pliers style I don't use this one very often, but in some situations, I do need to use this um, to get 
maybe some kind of leverage. To do the flaring for the brake lines, you're gonna need a 37 degree brake line flare tool. The reason for that is that the fittings are a 3AN, so it's not a normal, um, I think the normal is the 45 degrees, but this one is a 37 degree. And I have my tube cutter, which is to cut brake line tube. Let's get bending. This line finished, goes down there, and then up around there. I'll be really honest, this line that I got is stainless steel, and it is more difficult to bend. The normal line that I use is this stuff. This has like copper and some sort of other alloy in it and it is much softer and easier to bend like with your hand even that stainless steel stuff is so hard to bend. My fingers are raw at the moment from trying to bend certain parts of that by hand. I do have benders and stuff, but in certain cases, I have to use my hands to like manipulate it, to twist it or something, and that stuff is very difficult. That is why it's kind of taking me longer than normal. I started off with one line and I actually had to start all over because I got to a point where I couldn't undo a bend to get it to look straight so I just scrapped it and started all over. I'm pretty happy with how that one came out and now I am working on this line here. So this line is for the front brakes. This line will just go straight from here to that fitting down there. This is the last line. Thank goodness. When you're down to the short bends it's really hard to manipulate it with your fingers just to get like the right angle to get it, but we're getting it. Last one.
are so sore from doing this that it's even really hard to tighten this knob because they're very tired. So I have to use a napkin for padding to tighten this. Officially, well, no, I'm not officially finished with the brakes. That was a bad statement. I'm officially finished with bending these lines. Then I have to go back and tighten everything. So once I tighten everything, then I am officially finished with the brakes. And all I have to do after that is just bleed them. Obviously, I am not uh, ready to drive the cars yet. So I do not have to fully rush to bleed the brakes. I just really wanted to get the lines in the engine bay done because I did not want to put the engine in the bay and then be struggling to do them lines to be reaching behind there. So it was much more convenient to do them before I put the engine in. Now that I'm done with the lines in the bay, I can actually move on to getting ready to put the engine in the car. I've been working on so many small details and putting the engine in the car will be like a big step towards progress because once the engine is in, I think that everything else will just fall in line and I should have the car finishing up like really soon after that. Thank you guys as always for watching my videos. I really hope that this video was helpful. Like I've been saying lately, it would be a really helpful thing if you guys enjoy the content to give the video a thumbs up and leave a comment down below because that also helps my channel. Share with your friends, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace. Bye.